Hi, welcome to another part of Power Instance Lecture. Today our lecture is titled Why RMS and Average Values. And I think uh, some of you will be wondering why we need to cover RMS and averages. We have already done it before in some other modules. Uh, it's already basics and we need uh, to cover more, maybe more advanced topics. But I just want to highlight some point, which is RMS and average values are really very important to be known for any power electronics engineer because they are very essential and important to assess uh, the performance of your converter and very important to select your components. So we, we use to know the average and RMS values for some common signals like sinusoidal, but in power electronics, we don't have really sinusoidal signals. We have different things and we have to know what are these waveforms and how we calculate the RMS and average value. So the objective of this lecture is to highlight the importance of these in power electronics. And maybe in the coming video, we are going to cover how we um, calculate these for different various waveforms. So I think if I ask you what is the signal, you will say sinusoidal, and you know all the properties for this sinusoidal waveform. You know the frequency, amplitude, and also if I ask what is the RMS, I think it's already memorized. It's V peak divided by square root of 2. And if I ask what is the meaning of VRMS, physical meaning, I think most of you will be okay confident to explain that to me. However, in power electrons, we really don't have all the time sinusoidals or in, in input or output. For example, the DC to DC converters, no sinusoidals there. Uh, in, in most of the uh, DC DC converters, there are some parts of it. We have some sinusoidals, but most of uh, 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 non isolated DC DC converters, we just have different signals. Like what? Like this one. We have square, which is bipolar, has positive, negative. They are not very symmetric. Okay, so they have some average value and also different RMS value. If I ask you to Calculate the RMS value for, for the signal, I think uh, you will struggle a little bit. Okay, what about this one? This signal is, is, is one of the signals that going through a diode. So how we gonna select that diode? What's the expected current going through that diode? And what's the expected power dissipated by that diode? So I think it's not very easy if we didn't cover the RMS and averages. And that signal, and that signal, and that signal. All of these are examples of waveforms we see in power electronic circuits. It's not sinusoidal anymore. It's not very straightforward equation. We memorize, and that's it. So that's why we have to see uh, other waveforms, and how we we have to recap that to bit. Um, this waveform is one of the example waveform across this uh, um, inductor. These waveforms here are the current waveform uh, for, forms going through this diode. That waveform and that waveform are examples for the current going through that inductor. So we have to know if I want to select an inductor, it's not just enough to say, yeah, we want one millihenry. No, we have to specify other um, uh, parameters to make our answer and design complete. So what is the RMS? I think most of you know the RMS, but I have here to recap a little bit. We have seen these waveforms before, and we know that we will meet these signals in our power electronic circuits. And I want to know what is the RMS, which is the effective value. To understand what's the effective value, let's have this example. If I have that signal or that signal or that signal, and I apply these signals across or um, uh, they are current signals and I just applied it, supply it to a resistive load. How much power delivered to that load that's converted to heat? Okay, so this is something that uh, physically can be explained. Okay, so that current really will pass through that resistor. Okay, and then will dissipate heat and will reach some temperature value. Okay. So to know what's the effective value, we can run the same experiment with the same resistance, but using a DC supply this time. And we adjust that DC supply until we reach the same temperature. 
when we reach the same temperature, that means we are dissipating the same power or that resistance uh, receiving the same power. That means I can really mimic uh, the value of these by the value of this one as equivalent, okay? So that's why now that, that signal is called the effective value or Arabic value. So it's a DC value that really have the same effect of these waveforms if they are supplying a resistive load and then will result in the same temperature. So what's the point of that and why we, why we need Ramos value? After, okay, if after I know the Ramos value, it will make it easy for us to calculate the power dissipated across the resistor, okay, or by this resistor. So the power dissipation equal the square of the uh, RMS value of the current times the resistance. If I want to calculate by these, it will be a little bit hard and maybe I need softwares to calculate the RMS value for these and or, or to know the power dissipated by these waveforms. But if I calculated the RMS value here, I can really just compensate that here and that's it. Okay, so this is one of the uh, uh, usefulness points for knowing the RMS value is just to compute the power dissipation. And for any periodic voltage, the RMS value is the effective value that will generate the heat, exact heat, if I supplied any different shape waveform across the same load. And now I think after knowing the RMS value, if you have a, a circuit like this, I think you will be more confident to specify what is the current, effective current going through uh, that inductor and effective current going through that um, diode or the switch here, okay? And you will be able to understand how we calculate the power dissipation and also select. So it has two benefits. The first one is the selection and the second one is to calculate the power dissipation. Selection, you don't need just to focus on the peak value or the average value because some signals they have zero average, okay? So we have to, to understand the RMS value more. For the average values, I think we have, we will cover now some examples that they are very useful to use, okay, especially in power dissipation. For example, if I have a diode and I know the diode has two terminals, the anode and the cathode, and I know the diode switch on if the voltage of the anode is more than the voltage of the cathode by some threshold value, okay? So after it switch on, it will, uh, pass the current through it and it will drop some voltage across its terminals, okay? So what is the definition of uh, uh, power dissipation? The power dissipation, average power dissipation is the integration of instantaneous voltage times the instantaneous current. And for example, this is what is the instantaneous voltage and current, okay? So for the voltage across this diode, if it switch off, it will be very high, and if it switch on, it will be very low, okay? Maybe the polarity here is, is opposite to what is shown here, because here the point 7 is on that side, and the voltage higher here is the, uh, the off side, okay? And when the diode passes this current, which is this portion here, okay? And when it's off, there is a full voltage across the terminals. Okay, now, if I want to calculate the power dissipation, I will go to the integration and know the power dissipation. But for this example, just I want to make it easy for you. We can use the average current, okay? And multiply it by the voltage drop across this diode and we can get the power dissipation. That power dissipation is called the conduction losses. And why they call it conduction? Because they are just uh, uh, calculating the power during this portion here, okay? This portion of time, when it's conducting, so that's why the word conduction, okay? When it's not conducting, the current is zero, so the multiplication is zero, okay? So we don't actually care about the conduction for the diode now, okay? There's another losses called the switching losses, when it's switching from off to on or from on to off, okay? There is very tiny switching losses, but for the diode, we always neglect these switching losses for the diode. But for 
other components like like transistors we consider this because they are sometimes really high so see now an example of how we used the average current to calculate the power dissipation across this uh, or by this diode and look at that i'm assuming here the voltage across this diode is fixed if it's not fixed i have to go for the integration as well so there is another example if i have bgt transistor when you turn it on it um, passes current from the collector side to the emitter side and at the same time it drops some voltage across the collector emitter terminals so that voltage sometimes according to some data sheets for example for this transistor TIB41 the VCE saturation if you saturated that okay it will be about 1.5 volt as maximum okay so I can consider the VCE set as a fixed value which is 1.5 volt for example and I can really use it to uh, um, to uh, calculate the participation so this is the instantaneous voltage and current through the switch here or the transistor when the transistor is on the voltage between the uh, collector and emitter is very low maybe low as 1.5 or even lower than this so it's very low the voltage here it's not specifically zero it might be 0 0.2 or 1 or 1.5 and the current is really high now this is where the transistor is conducting and start dissipating some power as heat okay but for the other portion when we turn it off i think the current here will be zero and the, uh, the, the, the losses will be uh, ideally zero, okay? So now let's see what's the equation for power dissipation. Again, we have the IC average, okay? And multiplied by the constant, which is VCE set. If VCE set is not constant if, during this portion here, during the conduction time, so we have to go for integration to get the average. But now I'm assuming that the voltage is fixed or constant and I can multiply it by the average value again we use now the average value for calculation of a uh, power dissipation and again this is the conduction losses is there another losses yes when we turn on and off that transistor it dissipates something called switching losses and sometimes it's higher than the conduction losses but I will cover it later and now there is another uh, transistor which is MOSFET and that MOSFET look like this. When I turn it off, there is no conduction between the drain and source, and there is no current will go through that transistor. But when I turn it on, there is a, a small resistance. It's like a small resistance appears between the uh, drain and source, and that resistance, if you look at all MOSFETs data sheet, you will find something like that, which is, for example, this MOSFET IRF840, you will find something like 0.85 ohm so you can imagine there is a resistance between the drain and source and that's rds on so that current will pass through that resistance and will make it dissipate power and that will make the mosfet dissipate heat okay so how we calculate that we can take that current and see the voltage drop across this resistance and we can use the power dissipation equation which is integration of V instantaneous times I instantaneous and finally we will get something like RDS on times IRMS square so now the resistance uh, power dissipated is IRMS square times the RDS on now we use the RMS value before we use the average value for diodes and for uh, BGT transistors and for MOSFETs where we have some resistors here okay we can use the rms value square times rds on for igbt transistors it's very similar to bgt transistors where we have collector and emitter and we just uh, when we turn it on the current passes through the transistor from the collector to emitter and also drops some voltage across these terminals called vce set is gotten from the a data sheet for that transistor and finally I can use the VCE set and multiply it by the average current and I then will will get the conduction losses okay 
So this is a few examples of how really we we can get the average current for different waveforms and RMS uh, values for different waveforms and multiply it by resistor or voltages just to get the power dissipation. Also, we can use the same concept for converter performance assessment. And if I asked you to uh, assess the efficiency for this converter, I think you will supply, supply it by some voltage and deliver power uh, for maybe a, a resistive load. And you will start looking at the power input and power output and also power losses. If you know the components in your converter, you can really estimate the power losses in diodes and uh, transistors and resistors and any other components by the same way, by knowing the average and uh, uh, RMS voltage and current. If I ask you to calculate here the efficiency, which is power output divided power input, you will start looking at the input side and calculate the power input, which is, for example, if we assume the voltage of the power supply here, which is battery, is fixed, so the power input average one equal the fixed value of the voltage input times the input um, current average value, okay? If the input voltage here is, is varying over time, so you have to uh, make integration for that. And we will cover that next, uh, next lecture. So for the output, because it's resistive, so I actually I can use the uh, I RMS times R square. Okay, I am a square times R, and then I will compute the power output, and then I, I can uh, compute the efficiency. I hope you now start appreciating the knowledge about uh, average and RMS values for different waveforms, like what we have seen in this lecture. And um, in the coming video, we will go through some different waveforms and various waveforms and go through how we really calculate the RMS value and average for them. And then if we really found them across uh, any component or going through any component, how we uh, use sometimes Spice to validate our answers for power dissipation calculation. I hope you enjoyed this topic and see you next time.